Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for August 15th, 2012. It is Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. And it's currently 8.16 a.m. And we're starting off on pretty much where we've been through much of the summer. Temperatures ranging from the mid-60s to mid-70s. Mid-70s right along the coast and lower 70s a little bit away from the coast. Of course, the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan areas are in the mid-70s with dew points in the lower 70s, making for a rather muggy morning and also supporting some fog throughout the region, ranging anywhere from four miles in visibility down to less than a half a mile in some locations. This fog is going to lift as the uh, skies start to clear out. We're going to see a potential for another round of strong to severe thunderstorms this afternoon. However, um, much like yesterday, I'm not convinced that we will have the brunt of this severe weather. I'm going to show why in a few minutes. We do have some showers and some strong thunderstorms moving through central and eastern Connecticut this morning and clipping portions of northern Long Island. So if you're out and about in those locations, you're dealing with some heavy rain this morning. That will clear out by 9 a.m. and will no longer be a threat for at least the rest of the late morning and early afternoon hours. So let's take a look at the radar and you can see we have one batch of showers and thunderstorms moving into New England. It moved through uh, portions of the Hudson River Valley and eastern Connecticut and portions of Long Island this morning with some uh, very impressive thunderstorms. Some One thunderstorm got to severe levels. We saw a strong wind gusts up to about 55 miles per hour and some small hail. That's all exiting out into uh, New England. And the next threat for showers and thunderstorms is starting to culminate with uh, this disturbance right here. You can already see showers and thunderstorms developing around the Tennessee River Valley. And this disturbance is going to track east. And we have another disturbance over the Great Lakes that's diving south as well. You can see a few showers here. And all of that is going to race to the east. Now, when we take a look at the War Vapor satellite picture, I think we can see a very clear picture of what's evolving here. For one, we have a very warm and unstable atmosphere in place over the northern mid-Atlantic. I think we can all agree with that, with dew points in the lower 70s already. We have a series of disturbances moving through. Now, here's a disturbance that moved through uh, this morning, producing showers and strong to severe thunderstorms over Connecticut. We have another disturbance here over the Tennessee River Valley. I think this one's going to move more towards Virginia and portions of Delaware and Maryland. And then we have another strong disturbance over the Great Lakes that is quickly diving to the south and east towards the northern mid-Atlantic in time for later this afternoon and early evening. Now, the question is, which disturbance will have the most influence? I can certainly make a case for this disturbance igniting a lot of thunderstorms over Virginia and thus creating a lot of substance over the northern Atlantic, leading to us missing out on most of these showers and thunderstorms. I can also make a case for the majority of the lifting with this disturbance to be focused more over the eastern Great Lakes and central New York, thus missing the northern Atlantic and creating a lot of substance and a few scattered showers, of maybe a thunderstorm or two. But for the most part, the brunt of the severe weather away from the northern mid-Atlantic. But if the timing is just right and these two disturbances interact, well, then you have the potential for a line of strong to severe thunderstorms from basically northern Pennsylvania down through the southern mid-Atlantic that will march east and move right through the northern mid-Atlantic. So what can we prepare for? Well, because the atmosphere is unstable and because we're dealing with multiple disturbances, we're going to have the potential for thunderstorms to develop and reach severe levels. These thunderstorms will be capable of wind gusts over 60 miles per hour. They will feature large hail if they reach severe levels because of all the dry cold air aloft, which you can see right here. And they will be capable of vivid lightning and very heavy downpours. So there's potential for localized flash flooding, wind damage, hail damage, if the thunderstorms develop and move towards the northern Atlantic. I could easily, again, make a case for this to completely miss the region and severe thunderstorms develop to the north and south of the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area and misses us completely. So we're going to keep an eye on how these disturbances interact as we move on through the afternoon hours. One key difference from yesterday, yesterday we had a lot of low clouds setting over the northern Atlantic 
which prevented us from becoming unstable and thus really killed any severe potential that uh, could develop over the northern Atlantic. Yes, there were periods of rain. Yes, some areas got very heavy rainfall, especially right along the New Jersey coast. But we didn't see any severe outbreaks like we could have. This morning, though, we're seeing a lot more breaks in the cloud cover. The majority of the cloud covers focus more towards Virginia and West Virginia. And as a result, that leads us to being a little bit more unstable and a better potential for those thunderstorms to develop than we had yesterday. But again, we're going to see how all these disturbances interact and how they evolve over the afternoon hours. The best potential for thunderstorms, I think, is going to range from 2 p.m. to roughly about 9 p.m. this evening. Thereafter, we clear out and we have, in, well, relatively enjoyable weather conditions. At least it will be dry. And uh, temperatures will fall into the upper 60s to lower 70s late this evening. So let's take a look at the model guidance using the European model guidance from the Penn State EWAL website. Here we are for this evening. Once again, we have this strong trough dominating the entire weather pattern here and will produce showers and thunderstorms this evening. That first cold front moves through. For tomorrow, we end up kind of in between these troughs. So we end up with dry conditions, a weak high pressure system overhead, and that's going to lead to sky cloud cover and temperatures basically in the mid to upper 80s. Same temperatures as today, by the way, where we will range from the mid to upper 80s for highs. Could see a few lower 90s around the Philadelphia metropolitan area. Same situation again tomorrow. Better chance of seeing 90, 91 degrees around the Delaware River Valley with this sinking air in place. And But the, the key point here is that we'll be dry tomorrow because of this ridge. However, by the time we get to Friday, that cold front will be moving through. We'll have a deep trough setting up over the eastern United States. Powerful cold front moves through with showers and thunderstorms. These thunderstorms could be rather severe, so we're going to keep an eye on that. Now, once this cold front moves through, we're going to have some rather enjoyable weather. A Canadian high pressure system takes hold as we are under the influence of a deep trough over pretty much much of eastern North America. And this uh, Canadian high pressure system will bring us low humidity, dry conditions, and temperatures pretty much seem seasonable, ranging from the upper 70s to mid 80s for highs. And that's going to remain in place all the way through the rest of the forecast period for Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and even into Wednesday if you want to go that far, with enjoyable weather conditions, temperatures ranging again from the upper 70s to lower 80s, uh, mid 80s, should I say, for highs. Uh, lows in the upper 50s, possibly even a few mid 50s thrown in there over the interior to the lower 60s along the immediate coast. No real threat for fog. Uh, generally comfortable, pleasant weather conditions heading in for the second half of August. So pretty much once we get through these showers and thunderstorms over the next three days, we're going to end up with rather comfortable weather conditions and excellent weather condition, conditions actually for this weekend. Well, that is the forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. You can follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter and Facebook. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there.